Hey, this is Chris, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing um, the largest um, ETFs listed on our market that um, track global shares. Um, and there's a whole range of them, but I'm gonna be specifically looking at the ones that have over a billion dollars of funds under management. Um, and they are IOO, IVV, um, the Magellan Fund, MGOC, VGS, VEU, and VTS. And I'm gonna be looking at them across a range of different metrics, um, including the size, uh, costs, um, the liquidity, their slippage, and their performance. And finally, giving you my view on, on what's the best um, global exposure to have in your portfolio. Um, so first of all, on size. Now, as I've already mentioned, all of these ETFs are pretty large with over a billion dollars of funds under management. In fact, the largest of all is the Magellan Fund, which has recently combined its structure. Um, and it's also you know, been around for quite a few years now. Um, the largest of the index um, type ETFs is the IVV ETF, which tracks the S&P 500, the US market. It has $4.5 billion under management. Um, and one of the reasons it's been um, very popular and growing fast over the last few years is that the US share market has had a fantastic period of performance. It's outperformed almost every other market in the world over the last five years. And so it's not a uh, unusual trend to see a lot of money attracted to this big um, IVV ETF that gives you S&P 500 exposure. So the next factor I'm gonna look at is costs. Now, generally what we've seen is a lot of cost pressure on these global ETFs, you know, which is great news for investors because paying less in costs means more of the return stays with you. Um, particularly on the index side, the fee pressure has been very consistent over the last few years. And what we see is some of these large um, global ETFs now have very low fees. Um, so VTS, the Vanguard US Total Share Market Index ETF, now only charges three basis points or three one hundredths of a percent. And that's followed very closely by the equivalent iShares ETF, the iShares S&P 500 ETF IVV, which charges four basis points. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, um, the active fund managed by Magellan charges 1.35% per year. So um, many, many times more. And, it creates a bit of a hurdle for them to overcome in order to achieve similar returns over the long run. So a huge range of different um, fees from a couple of basis points all the way up to 1.3 plus percent per year. The next factor I'm gonna look at is slippage. Now this is a really interesting factor when it comes to the global ETFs um, because there's a range of different types of funds from these low cost index versions through to the Magellan Fund, which is an active ETF. Um, and also a very popular one at that. Um, so the slippage or the cost of getting in and out of the index type ETFs is generally quite low with the lowest being VGS, which is the Vanguard Miski index, um, which covers international shares. And the slippage for getting in and out of that is four basis points, which is very low slippage. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, the Magellan Global Equities Fund has slippage of 44 basis points. So 11 times an index ETF. And what does that mean? Well, if you invest in one of these ETFs for a year, um, you pay two lots of slippage, you're crossing spreads twice, as well as a year's worth of fees. Um, and so if you invested for a period of, let's say three years and cross the spread twice and have three years worth of fees, the total cost of investing in that Magellan fund is something like 4.93%. Now that's a lot of cost that you need to overcome in order to earn a better return than the index. When you compare that, um, the round trip of investing into the index um, global um, VGS ETF over a three year period is around 21 basis points. Um, so, you know, big difference in slippage and when you combine slippage, particularly with costs, which really shows why it's difficult for these active managers to outperform and for investors to get a better outcome than simply investing into these low cost global indexed ETFs. Um, so then the next metric I'm gonna be looking at is liquidity. So this is how much daily turnover there are in these ETFs. The reason this is important is that you wanna know that you can get in and out easily and not rely on market makers in order to provide that liquidity for you. So you wanna see a bit of turnover. Um, the great news is that these eight um, or eight of the largest um, global ETFs now have over a million dollars worth of volume per day turning over with the largest volume coming in VGS and IVV, um, which have over $9 million per day of turnover. So really easy to get in and out of them, which is one of the big benefits of investing into these ETF structures. Um, the last metric, performance, 
particularly important one for investors. And what we've seen over the last few years is that the global ETFs that have more exposure to US shares have generally done better than other more broad based um, global ETFs. Um, and also the ETFs that have more exposure to large caps have done better than the ETFs that have more small caps. Now those are two things that will change over time. US won't always outperform and large caps won't always outperform, but they're the drivers of performance over the last few years. And what we've seen is that the Vanguard US Total Share Index or VTS has been the best performer over the last five years, returning a very impressive 17.93% per year. You know, that was followed quite closely by the iShares version, IVV, um, and then followed very closely after that by IOO, which is the Global 100 ETF. Both of those also have returns of over 17% per year. Um, on the flip side, um, the more broad global ETFs that also have more small cap exposure like VGS have performed um, not as well. It only returned 14.6% per year over the last five years. So you can see the effect of having more large caps versus small caps and more US versus other countries. But I would caveat that by saying that that will certainly change and over the next five years, I would expect probably different global ETFs to perform better. Um, now overall, our verdict is that the one that we prefer across all of these, and it's a tough one with global shares because there are quite a few great ones out there, but the one we've recommended to clients for the last um, seven or so years is IOO, which is the global 100 ETF. Now it's a little different to these um, low cost US or broad market indices that are provided because it gives you access to the largest 100 companies in the world. Um, so it's quite focused on large companies rather than small companies. And it does spread your money across lots of different countries with a larger focus on the US. It invests in countries like the UK, um, Switzerland, France, Germany, Japan, and Korea, in addition to the US. And despite highly, slightly higher fees than some of these other options, we really like its focus on large companies. These big, stable, global behemoths have been some of the best performers over the last five years, and this has shown up in performance. And this is why it's the one that we continue to recommend to Stockspot clients.